Hey guys, this is Chris, and today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to be doing the Femi X8 SE, and I know given the name of the channel, Hubson QC Help and Support, you're used to seeing all Hubson products, um, but this is something that's brought a lot of interest, especially in comparison with the Xeno. Um, so with that being said, I want to remind everybody the name of the channel is going to be changing. I'm going to constantly remind you that it's going to change. Once I lock in on a name, uh, then I will constantly remind you uh, what the new name of the group is. So those of you who watch regularly, um, once you see a notification from a new name, you'll be aware of that name. Um, so. As you know, with my channel, what I do is I'm not out flying and showing you all, you know, maximum flight range and stuff like that. Um, I do hope to get more flight stuff out once we get into nicer weather, um, probably sooner with this. Um, there's really not any beautiful scenery out here in the mountains when it's in the winter time. All the trees look like they're dead. There's really no color. Um, but if I get a good sunny day, and uh, can go fly over some of the farmlands or uh, mountains, then I will do so. And uh, hopefully do a comparison with the Xeno and the Femi. But the main focus on my channel, if you're a s subscriber and you know me, um, it's all about going over the quad functionality. A huge thing with me is flight stability and features. Um, when it's sold, what it says it's supposed to do, and if it actually does do that. And then we, if it doesn't do these things, we keep you up to date, um, let you know what the changes are, if they're any good, firmware update information, app update information, things like that. Um, the other thing is if they have any common problems where you need, uh, where it's going to be a popular fix like the Xeno, um, I predicted right in the very beginning that sucker's going to heat up. There's going to be problems with like Wi-Fi modules burning out. And sure enough, they have Wi-Fi modules burning out on them, myself included, um, which I have recently fixed. Uh, the only fix for that is to replace the whole board. The, the point in that is I show you how to fix the things. So if anything happens with this Femi, that is a common problem. Uh, and I can, I know the, the fix, I can do the fix. I am more than happy and willing to take this apart and, uh, I will show how to, you know, disassemble it. I'll show how to fix it, uh, give information where you can find the parts when they are available, things like that. So that's what we do on my channel. Uh, so if you're just stumbling onto my channel by searching the Femi SE X, X8 SE, um, Click that subscribe button and uh, I will do my best not to disappoint and uh, keep you informed. And another thing I really focus on is what to do as a beginner um, or right when you get this out of the box type of things you should do. Um, there's important things with every quad that you should know. It's not a matter of taking it out of the box, downloading the app, charging the batteries and shooting it up into the air. Um, you've you narrow your chance of success for that, with success for that. Um, if you follow some simple little rules, simple procedures, um, you have a very good chance of being very successful with this and having it for a long time. It's not a very expensive drone or quad at 400 bucks, but um, you don't want to go throwing that out the window by not doing a simple calibration, for instance, and then it goes haywire on you and you lose it. So let's go ahead and start and what we're going to do is we're just going to take it out of the box. We're going to look inside, see what it comes with, go over the quick start guide a little bit. Uh, I've got the manual, the actual user manual on my phone um, and I highly recommend that you download the user manual. I'll put the link at the bottom of the video and uh, I also highly recommend that you join some Facebook groups and there's a couple that I'm in and uh, you can come there and chat with me and some other great folks and uh, so I will put the links to these Facebook groups in there and you can just simply browse through search the group get lots of information or post a comment or question and uh, get answers so go down to the bottom of the video and uh, you can click on the links and join these Facebook groups and you can click on the link to 
um, download your user manual. So here we go. This is the box. Like I said, I've already broken the seal on it. I've already taken a look at this. And this is going to be the big competitor with Xeno. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be doing some comparisons with the Xeno. I'm going to try to keep that limited. Um, but I'm going to start right out of the out of the gate saying I really think this is going to hurt the Xeno. Um, those of you who are claiming the Xeno is flying fine, uh, no problems. I know different. Um, I don't care who you are. Uh, you are subject to the same problems as everybody else. You're not exempt. Um, the Xeno has flight control issues. Uh, the one thing I give Xeno credit on is its camera compared to this. What I'm seeing, the camera on the Xeno is better. Didn't start out that way though. It took some updates. So I have faith that Femi will take care of these little updates and fix these issues. And uh, I'm also going to clear up some rumors that are out there about the Femi and some problems that it might have. So let's open her up. Try to keep you in view here. First thing you're going to see when you open it up, a quick start guide. Uh, the quick start guides, this seems to be the way that people are going. Um, they give you the basic information. Please don't read that and think that's all you need to know. It does show you how to get started and what to do. Um, this is why I don't like quick start guides because a lot of people read these, they think that's it, and then they go. They forget very important things like calibrations. So I'm going to actually, I've got the uh, user manual on my phone. We'll be going through that in the video. But let's go ahead and pull some things out of the box. And I've already got everything out of the plastic, so it's just kind of laying around in here. But you have your uh, two Android cables. And I have not confirmed it. But I am told that the uh, micro USB, when put in the controller, is, and the one thing is, you notice they went with a full-size USB for the controller, and then this for your device. So what I am told is when this is entered into the, into the controller which I think is like this and then this goes into your phone that this ends up being upside down so I have not confirmed that but that's something to look out for it does not correspond properly and I think the guy was able to put his like that by folding it folding it over um, that's not real good because you're kinking this normally these are fairly cheap and eventually that's going to be a problem. So I think the fix right now would be as if you could find yourself a extension to give you a little more cable, uh, whether it be an extension for a male, a female to male micro USB or a female to male regular USB. And uh, that way it'll give you more room to uh, do what you've got to do to make it work. Again, I have not confirmed this, but this is something to work out, look out for. And if anybody else that has a Femi watching this video, if you can confirm that, please do. Um, just so I know, know for a fact. So it's got both the Android device cables. And then it's got the lightning cable for iOS. And that's what I primarily use. Um, the controller does support the iPad mini. Um, so I'm certain it will support my small size uh, Android tablet. That's about the same size as a mini. It should support that in size. It really does expand what you're going to see. But there's a lightning cable. And let's go ahead and bring the controller out. And first off, my very first thoughts on this controller when I pull it out of the box and hold it it just feels good. <laughs> Simply put, it just feels good. Um, it really feels good in my hands. Um, it's got some nice rubber grips here on the side. It's nice rounded corners. It's not square. The plastic is thick. It's got a nice weight to it. 
and the other thing I like is you've got your your gimbal sticks right here locked in there so if you want to throw it in a bag you're not going to hurt anything and they simply I don't have very long fingernails but they simply pop right out and then screw into place like that And there you go. The only downside to that is anything removable and small, you can lose it. So be very careful in losing those. It's not something that I uh, see as a fault of the of Femi. Uh, if you lose them, obviously it's your fault. Uh, and I do like that they are removable and storable. Uh, most are removable, but this one actually gives you a place to store them. So I like that. Go ahead and just show you the size. This is impressive. That's pretty big. So it definitely holds an iPad mini. They even say so that it is iPad mini compatible. So whatever size the iPad mini is in me measurement, I'm sorry, I don't know the exact measurement. If you have an Android tablet that meets those measurements, then it's going to work for that as well. It's got a little track here for your cable. So your cable can plug into your device. And then obviously your device sets in there and the cable is nicely enclosed. The other thing that I noticed that I really like from this, besides all the nice rubber grip that it has, is the gimbal sticks themselves. Uh, the problem I noticed with Zeno is when you press forward, it does not center track. It does easily drift off to the left or right. This center tracks very nicely. It's got a good pushback on it. Same goes for your left and right movement. Um, it does not feel like a sloppy, loose, toy grade controller. And that is a problem I have with the Hubson Zeno is it just feels like a toy grade controller. It feels cheap. The gimbals are very loose and sloppy, not finding that on this. So I hope that the control is very responsive with this. Um, then you have this little guy here. They call this a five point switch. So it's center and then one, two, three, four. These control different um, kind of settings, which we'll go over that as well. And then you have this one right here, which is your flight mode, they're calling it. But what it does is it selects uh, your return to home point. So flip it to the right and you will return to home and it will land, I believe, at the takeoff point. And then flip it over here and it will return to home and just hover up over top of your head and then you take control and you land it wherever you want it to land. So I like that a lot. I like having that switch. I like a controller that can do many things that the app does. I don't want to rely strictly on an app. Uh, if I can do it quickly on the controller, that way I'm not fumbling around with the app or hitting the wrong thing on the app, which is easy to do. Um, that's a good controller when they give you all those functions. So you have that, that function there. So then, over here, this is your auto takeoff and your auto land. It's an up and down arrow. And then of course here is your power on. Uh, this comes, at least mine did, it came fully charged. And then on the back, you have your photo and video buttons. So one will be pressing for photo, one will be pressing for video. And then you have your wheel control. So with that, we have, which I should just go ahead and go over the manual and show you, uh, tell you exactly how they, how they work. But one's going to work your pan and tilt. And then this one here, I don't know if you can hear it. That controls what's called an ISO or an EV. Uh, the ISO uh, measures your sensitivity 
which is basically lower it's your light sensitivity so that right there is if you go lower which i think is this way if you go lower it's just less sensitive less sensitive uh, to light and then if you go higher it's more sensitive to light which gives you kind of that freeze frame to bright light uh, when it's sensitive it gives you like a little bit of a freeze so that's pretty much what that does and then I'm pretty sure this right here works your pan and your tilt and it does spring back so I'm not a hundred percent sure on that one um, so that covers all the buttons and features of the controller. Like I said, this thing just feels really nice. Does not feel cheap at all. We'll uh, do a comparison here with the Xeno just to show you the difference of what you're getting. Because both of these are pretty much the same price range. Big difference. The Xeno pulls down and that's all it holds. You have to put some sort of bracket in there for a tablet. Doesn't hold anything real big. So you can't put a tablet in here, you need a bracket. And the thing is, it does have photo video, it does have your gimbal control, but you really don't have any other thing, any other things but uh, sport mode, which does nothing. Um, and then you have your takeoff and land. So this controller really doesn't do near what this one here does uh, so that's also just a starting point right there that shows um, Femi's done it right so far and as far as the controller goes I see them already ahead of the Xeno so let's set that down and of course it comes with charging cable I don't know anything about it I haven't charged my battery with it yet uh, I don't know how well it is, so um, I will give it the benefit and try it out. And if I don't like it, I will most likely uh, make myself some sort of a balance cable to be able to use this on my hobby grade charger and balance it properly and put it into storage mode myself. Um, but I will try it out and give it a fair shot. So if I don't like it, I have a problem with it. I, w I want to make a balance cable or something. That's another video to come. I'm going to just set this down for now and let you know it comes with six props. So you only end up with one spare um, uh, clockwise and one spare counterclockwise, which I think they're calling positive and reverse rotation. Um, I think that's what it's called. But... This one here has no markings on it. And then this one here has got the dash marks on it. I think you can see those right here. It's got two dash, dash marks on it. So the quad itself on the arm, you'll see a dash mark. And then obviously that's where that prop goes. I just want to talk about the props real quick. Look at that. Nice and tight. And I'm going to refer to DJI on this. Uh, DJI's are nice and tight like that. They're built well. I'm going to sneeze. Excuse me. I feel a lot of sneezes coming on. Um, the uh, stiffness of this, I like. It just it shows that it's it's well built. I like the fact that it's one whole prop, and I like that it installs like a DJI does. Let's keep you in the camera here. You simply press it on, press down, turn the motor bell right here, turn it, and you're in. You're done. No screws, no screwdriver, nothing to lose. So you push down, turn it pop it off very simple so they went with a DJI style mount on this I'm very happy with that so let's go back to the Xeno as a comparison with the Xeno you have to remove two screws 
and these are separate pieces. So this is a separate half prop, and then this is a separate half prop. But the thing that drives me nuts about the Zeno is the looseness of them. They're just very loose. When you're trying to do a YouTube video, they drive you crazy because they're always in the way and flopping around. If you watch my YouTube videos, I'm sure you'll see I'm constantly having to move these out of the way because they don't stay anywhere. They're loose. Um, so it doesn't affect the flight of this or anything, but I don't like this type of prop because you have to remove screws for one. You can lose these screws and then you have separate props. The only thing that's good about that is if you damage one half of the prop, you're not having to replace a whole prop. Not a big deal. I'm still flying my Mavic on the original, my Mavic Pro on the original props for over two years. So I don't plan on destroying these, but I don't like that type of design. I do like to store my quads without the props. So with this style, it's very easy. So let's move on to the quad. Um, first, I'll just read what the front of the box says. You have 4K video, three axis mechanical gimbal, folding portable design, smart track and smart flight. This thing has a lot of features. A lot of features that I did not even ever hear anything about until I got into the manual. And also, there's now started to be, starting to be a few videos out there that show some of these. Uh, five kilometer range, 33 minute flight time, and then pre precision vis vision positioning system, which are your sensors on the bottom. So now let's unfold it. Just like the controller, it just feels good. It, it's got a nice weight to it. It's not too heavy, but it just feels nice and solid. It feels like a quality build. build. It's got nice lines. It's got smooth edge edges. It's not like very sharp. Not a lot of seams. I like that a lot. You have to open out the front legs first. Everything clicks and locks into place nicely. As you see, it's got a nice, nice round design. Try to hold it here. It's got a nice round, smooth, all the edges are rounded out. No, nothing sharp. You're not looking at any big seams. It's very clean. I like it. I like the front. Uh, this right here. The first thing I'm going to say is this does not have optical avoidance. It does not have the sensors, but this right here, I'm going to make the prediction, which other people have talked about as well, I'm sure. But uh, I don't think it's any surprise that in the future there's going to be something here. Now, one thing I do not like is in the box, it's got this protective piece of foam over the camera. But taking that off, you have no gimbal protection whatsoever. So that's one thing like the Mavic and the Xeno. You have a nice gimbal cover. I think uh, Xeno did very good with that. They did a better job than even the Mavic. The Mavic pops off very easily. Sometimes it can fall off. This one stays on. It stays on very secure. And it's a good hard plastic. There is no protection here. So hopefully somebody will come out with something uh, to snap in place. I don't see anything that's going to make that real easy. Except maybe underneath the top here there's a lip. But down here it's pretty flush. Uh, so I don't know if that's going to be very possible to put any type of cover on that. The other thing I want to point out is the gimbal. I like the security of it. Um, I've never seen them where they have the bumpers on the sides. Normally you're hanging from four uh, bumpers like rubber grommets. Uh, this one has the four at the top and then two on the sides. So without trying to block it, you'll see them. And then it's got the aluminum frame on both sides that goes up 
to the top of the gimbal. Um, I, I like that. It feels very secure. Um, it doesn't jump and wobble around as much. So um, from the videos I see, I'm pretty surprised because it's got very good stabilization. Um, so I like that. I like that uh, from what I'm seeing in videos. It seems to work. So that's something fairly new to me. It looks like it's very rugged. It could take a hit more so than if you have a Mavic Pro or Mavic 2 or the Xeno. Uh, those, Campbell, those, those gimbals are uh, not as secure as this. So this looks like a very good stable design. It'll be interesting to see how it performs. Uh, the other thing uh, I did mention that, you know, my thing that I did not like was it didn't have gimbal protection. The other thing is so far we are seeing that there are camera quality video issues. Uh, so the quality in the video is not there yet, but um, I'm kind of glad because that's where the Xeno started out along with it having several flight control issues. And so far Xeno has nailed come close to nailing the video. I, they can stop right where they're at on the video and go to flight control now. Um, I wish they would have put more focus on flight control, but actually I think they're lost at the moment. Um, so hopefully Zine, uh, Femi will be able to jump right into that and get into fixing any of the issues with the camera. You're seeing a lot of blue uh, in the images. Um, different opinions your eye tells you differently than my eye tells me uh, I see things that I like you see things that you dislike so it's kind of hard to really say but the biggest topic is it's awfully blue um, quality looks very nice um, I'm not seeing any uh, any major freeze framing or any color bursts or major soft uh, focus issues or anything like that uh, but they definitely do have some work to do on the camera itself uh, flight so far, uh, one thing this has on Xeno is it flies straight and when it turns it doesn't descend and when it turns this way it doesn't go higher in altitude. Um, the camera centers, these are all problems of the Hubson Xeno. They've had this problem from the start right out of the gate. They have not fixed one of them yet. Uh, that's a big concern if you're looking to buy the Xeno versus this. Uh, so far, this does not have near the issues that Xeno has. Um, further research may, as more people get them, further research may uh, prove different. But right now, uh, out of the gate, this, this seems to be um, hitting the Xeno a little bit. It's, I think it's really going to affect Xeno sales if this thing continues to progress. The battery, I like. It's got your typical type battery like your... Um, your Mavic would have where you squeeze it and pull it out. It's got a similar design and shape to it. Here's your battery. Got your buttons on the side. You have your level of lights for full charge and your power button and you simply just push it down. Snaps in place. Very simple. Um, I like this, I've always liked this style where it just simply pulls out the top versus how Xeno does it to the back of the quad. That seems to be a Hubson trait. All their batteries, they like to have the rear entry. They like to have them to where they slide in. So I guess you could say Maybe I shouldn't say, but Hubson likes to take it in the rear. So, that's how Hubson does their batteries. I think a lot of the Hubson customers end up taking it in the rear, but uh, hopefully that's not the point, the, the problem with Femi. Um, I'm going to turn this lighting down a little bit. It does seem to be glaring a bit on here there we go so I just want to give you a couple of nice close looks nice clean design a 
Very nice. I really like it. Uh, to me, it looks kind of more like a stormtrooper type look face to it. I, I like that a lot. It's not. It's not got a real big. It is big. It, it is boxy on the side, but I mean that's how the design of most of them are now. But it, it's got some nice contour shape to it. Like I said, everything's nice and round and soft. Where if you compare it to the Zeno, the Zeno is very boxy. Every aspect of it, except for the very top, is very square, very boxy, with sharp type edges, not smooth edges. They're sharp edges, just meaning perfectly cornered. Um, just very, it, it's kind of like a more of a whale shaped body. Really, no nothing went into that um, this does not indicate any indication of future sensors I assure you the space up there is filled already um, there is no room for any sensors up here unless they make this a little higher uh, there is no room for a whole lot of advancement within the Xeno from what I can see inside and who knows that may be the case in here there may be no room for sensors this may be 100 percent just for looks to give it that that uh, look like it does have sensors on the bottom you have your heat shrink or heat sink uh, it's a metallic metal like aluminum and if you see you've got your two sensors now i before I got this, thought it just had the one optic flow sensor, and that turns out this is not the optic flow sensor. This is, right here is your ultrasonic uh, detecting module, they call it. And then this one here is your optical flow camera sensor. So it has two sensors. Now these work with the GPS mode only, I believe. They don't work if you're into like altitude, or they call ADI mode, like altitude hold mode. And um, the other mode I think is EVO mode, I think it is something like that. Um, but we'll, we're gonna go into the manual next, so we'll kind of go over that. But you have these two sensors here. Um, so no old fashioned barometer. They did step it up and they went with some sensors on the bottom. Um, that should be much better for flight stability and uh, using some of your features. So, I do expect with something like that to have a, a, a very good grasp on return to home point where it lands pretty, pretty damn close to where it took off. Um, and since it's the height of the ground as it descends and slows down um, how all of that is controlled versus using a barometer which is never dead on it's usually always off and it can be off one two meters um, so let's get into the manual and then we're just going to finish this video up and that's what we're, that's all we're going to really cover until we get into future stuff so uh, it's a 28 page manual it covers a whole lot a lot more than the quick start guide so basically if, if you have the quick start guide and you're going to rely on that i recommend you just toss that aside because you're going to get everything else in the manual as well and uh, basically the manual just goes over everything i've just gone over with you gives you a little more detail on uh, some of the buttons and and sensors and things like that it tells you what they are uh, it, it gives you more detail on what certain color lights indicate during flight or pre-flight. Um, so those are things you want to get familiar with. Um, you know, it, it show, tells you one thing I didn't show you uh, down here at the bottom of the controller. This rubber door opens up and you have your charging port and your USB port your USB port and micro USB port for charging and for doing firmware upgrades updates um, on that note I've heard so far that this thing is a breeze to do updates to there's no crazy special rules like Hubson tried to say with the Xeno 
by saying you have to update everything every time, which turned out to be false. Early on, I was just putting in FC. I was just putting in camera. I wasn't doing everything and it worked perfectly fine until my Wi-Fi burned out. Um, so it goes over your basic, all the stick stuff we went over on the um, uh, controller, which I think we covered it all. And then it goes over your um, drone indicators, your flight mode. You have a GPS mode, which is standard, your VPU mode. So I'm sorry, I got got that wrong. It's your VP mode, which is your optical flow. And I highly recommend you read the difference between these different modes. I'm not going to drag it out and read everything. And then your ADDIE mode, which they put in parentheses, posture. So flight mode, uh, GPS mode, standard. VPU mode, optical flow. And then ATI, ATTI mode, posture. And moving on, um, it tells you some things about safety, fail safe returns. That's something you definitely should know before you go out and fly it. Learn your fail safes. And um, there is one thing that people are not going to like. And a lot of people are asking questions about this. Hovering on the edge of a no-fly zone. So yes, it does have pre-programmed in the firmware, a no-fly zone. Um, many of you people don't like that. Uh, I can understand in some inst instances where you live, uh, like myself, I live right next to a hospital. That hospital has a helipad on top. I'm in a no-fly zone. So for me to take this outside and fly it in my yard at low altitude and just sit, sit on my back patio, have a beer, do a little bit of light flight, this thing might not let me do it. Uh, that might only be GPS mode, so maybe I can put it in another mode and be able to fly it and bypass that. I don't know. Um, but it is good because if people are flying to airports, over airports, or anything like that, it's going to stop. It's going to stop and hover. It's not going to lose control. It's not going to let you, it's not going to just kill the sticks. It's just not going to let you move forward. It will let you bring it back. So that's good for airports and things like that. If you are trying to follow the rules like I do around my house, I want to be able to fly it outside. And if it stops me from doing that, that's a bummer for me. I, I, I'm very disappointed if that's the case. I don't know yet. So a lot of you are disappointed by hearing that. I'm confirming it does say in the manual that hovering on the edge of a no-fly zone, the drone will automatically hover in the restricted area, the uh, restricted restricted flight area designed by the state, such as the edge of airports. And then it goes on to explain that it'll just hover like I explained. So that is built into the firmware. My apologies, not my fault. Uh, and then auto takeoff, auto return, smart track. This thing has a ton of features so many more features that have been talked about that i hadn't seen prior to getting it um, so really read up on all your features uh, look for youtube videos on how to do these features some of them are pretty cool if you're into features they are pretty cool i'm not a big feature guy i just really like to fly my quads i'm not a big orbit person i do like to do waypoint mode and things like that and so far what I'm seeing, this thing does it flawlessly. Um, there have been rumors also that there are Android issues versus iOS issues, but there's people out there proving that wrong. Um, that so far it is very good with iOS. Few issues or restrictions with Android, which is typical, but for iOS so far it's been very well. Um, one rumor I heard was it was worse for iOS and Android, but from what I'm seeing, that does not prove out, prove to be the case. You got orbit, you got tap fly. I'm just going to name them. I'm not going to explain them all. Spiral mode, SAR mode, course lock, tripod mode, aerial mode, waypoints, precise landing, um, and then in those modes... Um, 
one of them, if I can find it, the way that it, the one thing it does is you, it, it's, it's called rocket mode. And what it'll do is it'll come hover directly above you. You point your, your gimbal directly at you and it just shoots straight up like a rocket, continuing to foam, film you. And then the other one um, takes it, it automatically flies out to a certain point. I think you can set that distance. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure you can set that distance. And then it turns and it flies right at you down at a 45 degree angle. So that's pretty cool too. So if you want to get something cinematic, you're out there with your kids or your kids are playing and you wanted to get a neat little cinematic shot of them, it will fly out, turn around, and it will automatically come down at a 45 degree angle and stop. Um, so that's kind of nice if you're trying to make a more of a cinematic type movie involving your kids, your dog, or whatever you're trying to film. So that, that's a neat feature. But it's got lots of features. Read up on them. Play with them. Get to know them. Um, and within each feature, you have different settings of height and, and, and things like that that you can change. Uh, and that is pretty much it. It just goes over the propellers, the battery, charging, turning on and off, uh, your memory card where it goes into the side, which I'm going to show you that real quick. Uh, that's another thing I like about this. It's not left wide open. On the Zeno, it's left wide open. You say, up, oh, that's not a big deal. I don't care. Well, I don't care. Eventually, unavoidable, you're going to have to land in a very dirty area, um, sandy area, and you don't want that getting in, the, especially getting into your card slot. Um, so having this cover is very nice. And you just simply pull it aside. You put your card in, and there's your update port, your mini micro SD card. And then it's got a switch here on the side. It's got a switch here right on the side, this bottom. That is your Wi-Fi and your RC. So if you switch it to the left, it puts you in Wi-Fi. Switch it to the right. It doesn't really click hard, so it's kind of hard to tell. It doesn't have a far travel and it doesn't really click. So it's hard to tell, but push it all the way forward, I think, is RC. Pull it back is Wi-Fi. So there's your two functions for that. The button up above it, which I thought was a button, it just turns out I think that's an indicator light. You read your manual, it tells you what the different indications mean for uh, pre-flight and then when it tells you, hey, you're ready to take off. I don't know that you can see that light through here and I may be totally wrong about it altogether. Like I said, I, I have been sick. I have not really done anything with this. I, I have not powered it up. I have not linked it to the app. I haven't done any of that. I want to try to do everything uh, fairly new with you guys in my on my channel and uh, give you kind of a beginner's perspective or viewing. Um, so as you're, as, as I'm doing it and teaching you, uh, I can explain it better that way. If I know it really, really well, and I'm trying to teach you and explain it to you, um, I might just take, take it for granted that you already know this or that and then skip important points. So I find it better that I kind of learn as I'm teaching you. So that's it, everybody. Welcome the Femi X8 SE. And it's going to be very interesting from here on out with the Hubson Zeno. Nothing against you, Hubson, but since November, with it now being February, you've had plenty of time to do something with your flight control. Uh, your very last flight control before you went on your Chinese New Year holiday. You failed and almost everybody went back from your newest update back to the previous version that's not good um, anytime you put out a firmware update and you got to revert back it's just not good uh, especially when the attempts so far have been pretty poor so in comparison so far just going over my the build quality 
I've already got some history on this one. Don't have any history on this one other than what I'm seeing, but once I do it myself, um, I think it's fair to say at this point right now, this one's on top. So right now my recommendation and uh, my thumbs up goes to the Femi. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see what if Hubson comes back from their Chinese New Year with a firmware update, that would be very nice. Um, there is absolutely no support right now during the Chinese New Year. There's nothing for the uh, Zeno. Support is open for the Femi. Um, I've seen it in a couple of the groups. The, the guy seems like a representative to me. Maybe he's a dealer, I don't know, but the support is there. Um, very good group so far. Like I said, I'll put the links in the bottom of the video. Go down there. All you newcomers that are just stumbling on me for the Femi, uh, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, give me a chance to give you some good content and uh, try not, I try not to disappoint. Um, I try to do the best to help other people. That's what my channel is all about. It's all about help, uh, to give you the help in video. Um, to, to show you what you need to do. So when the day comes, if you ever have to change this camera, hopefully I'll have a video to show you how to do that. If you ever have to open her up, change any hardware, motors, ESCs, anything like that, hopefully I'll have a video for you to do that. Um, so far, there's nobody out there taking this Xeno apart and showing you how to replace the main board, the gimbal, and things that I've done. Um, I'm the only one so far. So, and it's not just because I had a problem with mine. Um, so, uh, it's, it's all about the type of channel I am. I'm not out there to fly and get a whole bunch of range. I'm not out there to fly and, and, and send you a whole bunch of videos of my flights and things like that. You can find hundreds of those getting the proper help and support. That's a different story on a lot of YouTube channels. So that's my goal. Uh, remember the name is going to change you newcomers. Go ahead, click that subscribe button. Uh, everybody. I take the time to give you the good videos or the best I can. Give me that thumbs up. And uh, to all, as always, when I end my videos, to all who subscribe, thank you very much. You guys are awesome. And uh, thank you for all the support. And um, that's it. So more to come on the Femi X8 SE. And... Um, the next one, I'll, I'll get more into powering it up, binding it, getting into the app, and uh, eventually we'll end up where we've got this thing up in the air. I'm going to give Hubson one more chance to give us a good FC update. Then I'll put it up in the air, and we'll compare to the two together. And when that time comes, if anybody wants to see anything in particular between the two or the two together, I'll do my best to make that happen. So that's it. Thank you very much, everybody, and uh, look forward to bringing you another video soon. Take care.